Okay, so the crazy countdown to Thanksgiving has begun. You know what? Let's just go ahead and just say that this is where I need to put everything for you to see and I need to not block. I'm making cookies and Chex Mix and I thought, hey, I have become pretty famous to everybody for my Chex Mix. Why don't I share the recipe? So I have this great big cooker. It's basically the same thing as a slow cooker. If you do a normal recipe, which would be half quantities of my recipe, then you would be just fine with a regular, you know, cooker of some sort, a regular um, um, slow cooker. However, I don't do things small. <laughs> We, everybody, my parents, everybody goes crazy for my um, Chex Mix. So I often get requests for it. So I'm doing my best. Let's see if that works. Okay, let's see if it works or if it all hits the ground. Um, I'm voting for working. Yeah, that looks pretty sturdy. Well, it'll be entertaining if it goes down. Um, so my rambling, well, I lost my place, but just trying to say that a lot of people love my recipe and I thought, well, I'm making it anyway, let's share it. One thing of note, I couldn't find what I usually use. Um, I had to use these new butter rounds. The sea salt ones are less points. Um, you can probably make it for two points, a fourth of a cup of Chex Mix if you can find the sea salt rounds. But with the butter rounds, it comes out to 80 servings in this whole thing. Probably more than that, but I estimate on the lower side so that, you know, I, I'm being kinder to my points instead of eating more than I think I am. So it's three points, a fourth of a cup of Chex Mix when we're all that sun done. If you can find the sea salt rounds, two points. So it's a whole bag of those. Oh my lord, that was loud. Okay. And then two containers of the Fisher's oven, uh, Fisher oven roasted never fried mixed nuts. The important is the never fried. The never fried ones are, uh, and I get the ones that have peanuts. The, the never fried ones are less points and less calories and just as tasty, and I like them because they've got pistachios, which is one of my favorites. So I've got two whole containers in here. And then I've also got some, ooh, okay, see all that seasoning that went into there? It, I measured it in here because I was making sure, I was trying to make my measurements make more sense than just what the package says. And I was trying to double check my numbers and make sure my points were coming out correctly, especially with the new thing, because I can't go off my phone, you're using it. So I had to write everything down and I just double checked it first. So anyway, there's one of these in there and I'm about to put a second one, which the two together, I measured it, they come out to, let's double check before I say something stupid as usual. Um, da -da 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 -da. Cheerios, three cups, the two of them together is Regardless of what the outside says, when I put it in a measuring cup, it's three cups of those. I like them. They absorb a lot of the seasoning, and they just become little flavor bombs in your Chex Mix. And they're less calories than some other add-ins you could put. Um, like I said before, I'm doing a double batch. This is the first of many double batches I will make through the holiday season. Because my father, it's his favorite thing. My mom loves it, Everybody, I, my husband can't get enough of it, even my kids come through the house with perked up heads going, did you make checks? I want checks. So for normal checks, it's three cups each of the three cereals. I'm doing double batch, so it's six cups each of each cereal. Okay. So there you go, the wheat, it gets a bad rap. It's actually one of my favorites because it just takes on more flavor. Or, 
Okay. So that was the wheat checks. Now we're going on to the, and yes, as my daughter keeps reminding me, nothing is sponsored. These are just the ingredients that my family has used for millennia. Some of them I swear by. Some of them I just don't know any better. And you really, you could use dang near anything you wanted to use. I mean, the the shredded, the mini shredded wheats that are plain might not be horrible. I've been tempted to try something like that before. Every every year I do something just a little different. It just seems to be the way with me. I can't do anything exactly the same. I gotta try to improve it, try to get the points down, try to get more flavor in. Sometimes it's a hit. Sometimes not so much. This year I'm throwing a curveball into my usual. Let's see how it goes. There's my son. Hello. Okay, that is definitely more than six cups in there. Let's put some back in the box. I'm trying to get my points correct. Nope, there's still more. Come on. That's looking right. All right. Okay, cereal's in. Nuts are in. The other cereal is in. Okay. Next comes... Let's see, get everything out of my way. Those are for the cookies later. That's trash. Actually, no, it's not. It's recycling. Um, those are for cookies. That's trash now, AKA recycling. Okay, I think, yeah, we're ready for, and in past I've used like those, those little rye rounds and all sorts of different things, but this is just quick and, really quick and simple and easy. My hands are nice and clean. It's just easier to stir this with your hands so you don't crush all the delicate cereal. Later when I do the wet stuff, I'll use something else. But for now, that was just easier. Let me get that something else real quick because I'm going to need it real soon here. Okay, so there's my handy dandy spatula. And I forgot to grab my softened butter. Okay, so... Here's the important one. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Whoo, little heart attack. Just a little one. But that's okay. I have a plan B. Instead of a great big slippery piece of plastic, let's shove a pillow under it. And if you like it, thank you. Because I'm the one who made that pillow cover. Straight. Breaking my water. All right, that's looking good. All right, here's the important bits, because up to now, it's it's just following the regular recipe pretty much, just trying to, like, find the least calorie nuts and find the least calorie pretzel option. You know, I, other than that, I haven't deviated too terribly far from the original recipe here. Where I did deviate is my butter and my seasoning. So I have reduced the amount of, now remembering this is a double batch. Um, I have reduced my butter. Oh, I might want tablespoons and teaspoons and all that fun jazz. Come to me, my spoons. Okay. Here we go. Butter, butter, butter. It's all out of order because as I tweaked and adjusted on Weight Watchers, it was just the last one tweaked was at the bottom. So butter, four tablespoons, which means on a regular batch, it would be two tablespoons. And a knife is a helpful tool in a kitchen. All right. For those of you who've never cooked in your lives, on the side of the stick of butter, it tells you one, two, three, four. If you see that they pet wrapped it bad, because that happens, just kind of try to figure it out. 
to the best of your ability, it doesn't matter that much as long as you're not flubbing by an entire tablespoon. <laughs> For your waste and your recipe, I recommend you try to get it as accurate as you can. Okay, so four tablespoons of butter. Because you can't, you gotta have that real butter taste in there or it's not worth eating. But you also gotta have way less butter than what it calls for or it's not worth the calories because, oh, lots and lots and lots of points. Um, this one's already open, but how many do I need? Do, 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 do. Where did you go on my list? Come on. Butter, Worcestershire, seasoning blend, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, cayenne, Cheerios, Crisco, there it is. Eight tablespoons, which on Weight Watchers, it would only let me say it as eight. But the same, it's the same thing as a half a cup. So, how many do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, good. I can do it from this stick. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So, there's the one I want to cut off. It's the Crisco butter flavored, or the butter flavored Crisco stick. Comes in a box and then when you open it up it's like this. And just like butter, it's got the tablespoons on the side and like quick, this is a half cup kind of measurements. It has a buttery taste, so it adds to that butter flavor, but it's a lot, lot less calories than butter. Um, and as I said before, it's a, ha it's a, a double recipe. So on a single recipe, you would do two tablespoons of butter and four tablespoons of the Crisco. But like I said, I, I go big or go home. So, well, I go big at home rather. So there's the butter. You know what? I just realized you can't see any of what I'm showing. Can you? Oh, you can. Oh, thank goodness. Here. Okay. So there's the butter and the Crisco, and then we're going to add my favorite, Worcestershire. Do not skimp on your Worcestershire because it adds boatloads of flavor that actually kind of mask the fakeness of the, the different oil, and it just gives it a nice richness. Brand new bottle. You know, if I was a smart person, which I'm not always, I would look in the fridge before opening a brand new bottle and see if I have a brand new uh, bottle sitting in there, which I do. I am notorious for that when I'm in a baking mode. Okay, so we're just this year, eight tablespoons, which is again a half a cup which would have been easier before I did the butters. But I still have the wax from the butter right here. All right, come out of there. You too, butter. How would I say? Ah, no, not on the table. Ew. There we go. And there's the reason not on the table, Perry. You stay off my table. Okay. So, a half a cup. Well, that's a lovely sound. Sounds like he's glugging a beer. Okay, there's a half a cup. Now I can put all this back in there. Okay. There, I knew there was a cap somewhere if I was diligent enough to find it. Let's wipe our hands off. Oh, a nice clean towel. Yes, my clothes are covered in paint because I'm going to go paint the um, new bathroom downstairs. <laughs> it's that kind of day. Okay, 
And then seasoning blend. Did I bring my spices over here or did I just lay them on the counter? I laid them on the counter. Come to me, my little friends. All right. The first is one of the most important. This is a staple of my childhood. The season we use the most often. Morton Nature's Seasoning with the blue cap and the yellow label. I love this stuff. Many, many recipes were based off of this in my childhood. And my brain is a sieve. Two tablespoons. Or as Weight Watchers let, makes me say it, six teaspoons. Once again, if you like it really seasoned and maybe a little salty, I knew I was going to run out, that's why I got another container, uh, or a little salty, it's okay. This is zero points. You can add more of any season you want or less of any season you want. This is just like the magic numbers that have wound up working for my family over the years. Okay, and if you've never cooked, you want to level off your measurements. You kind of do your best to get it in there and then push it into the low spots before you try to top it off. And like I said, this is not a precise you don't have to have exactly the right amount. It's better to have a little extra than to have a little too less because diet food should still be tasty food. All right. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. There's some pepper in there. Okay, onion powder, two teaspoons. Come here, my dear. Okay, teaspoon. I love these spoons. America's Test Kitchen told me to buy them and they were right. Okay, one and... Come on. Are you full? It's hard to tell sometimes. Yes, you are. Okay, two. And that was, what were you? Onion powder. You know what? Let's just go ahead. I've already got the cereal in, the butter's in, the Worcestershire's in, the seasoning blend's in, the... Onion powder is in, um, the Cheerios are in, the Crisco's in, the pretzels are in, the nuts are in. Okay. So then we're going to do garlic powder for three teaspoons or the same thing as a tablespoon. Once again, Weight Watchers would not let me call it what I wanted to call it. It would not do the tablespoon. It would only do teaspoon. But I looked at my conversion chart and a te three teaspoons is a tablespoon. So one tablespoon of garlic powder. And then just a couple left. So I have added paprika over the years. And it has been a real hit. A nice smoky one is good. This one's Hungarian paprika. It's a really good quality fresh paprika. Just gives it a little smokiness, a little warmth, not really heat, unless you use spicy paprika, but just a little warmth, a little, a little depth, a little color. A little smokiness. It's one of my all-time favorite ingredients. Paprika and thyme are two of my... Well, I could just start listing things like garlic and onion. and <laughs> But when it comes to seasonings, thyme and paprika are, are in sage or in most things I cook. Okay. And then here's the curveball. I only throw it in when I'm sharing with my dad, which unfortunately is always. So my dad likes it spicy. If you don't like spicy, don't do this. But I'm going to add two teaspoons of cayenne pepper. And it makes my father gleeful. And my kids tolerated it two years ago. They, they were okay with it last year and now they don't even notice it. So 
You just got to, like a frog in hot water, you know, just slowly bring up the temperature. There we go. And now I'm going to pause you while I microwave that for like 10 seconds at a time, 10, 15 seconds at a time, because I have a hot microwave to melt the butter and such. Okay, noisy microwave is done. You don't want to get it all the way there with the microwave. You want to get it where you still got some chunks and pieces and then you can stir them in with a little tiny whisk. You apparently find the piece of foil that came off of one of your, off of the Crisco. That's lovely. But if you try to melt it all in one hit, you're not going to get it melted. You're going to get it overflowing. It's going to bubble up and out and go all over your microwave and you'll have to start from scratch because you'll have wasted all your lovely flavor. Okay. Now that that's looking nice, here's the dark horse. Here's the, the weird thing I'm going to do. In the past years, I've found that there's enough flavor, but it's hard to get it to go, like to, to get on everything. I want it to go a little further and coat everything a little bit better. So my zero point option, I'm adding a little bit of bone broth. And I'm just, I'm taking this up to where it's two cups of liquid. So whatever you wind up with, just bring, round it off up to two cups. It'll re-crisp as it cooks. So I promise it'll be fine. Ooh, and that coagulated just a little bit. All you got to do is stir, stir, stir. And everything will even out and heat up again. There we go. And that just kind of thins the mixture and helps it go further. Okay. Got that all good. And then... I pour some on, try to get it everywhere, and then stir. Because if you just dump it all in one spot, then some will get really soggy and absorb it all. And then when you mix, it's just not going to coat everything. You're, you're going to get some really flavorful ones, and most of it will be dry and not so tasty. Drizzle all over. Don't underestimate the importance of mixing. The more you mix, the more evenly coated it will be. I mean, sometimes it's nice to let one of your pores sit for just a moment so you can have a few flavor bombs in there. But overall, you want it, you don't want any dry pieces. You want everybody to have part of the party. And as you're mixing, you'll find dry spots. You'll see, you'll start seeing like a dry area and then you can make sure to give it a good hit. And here's the real problem. I'm not sure how long my phone will stay paused without, you know, the battery completely dying. Because this has to cook for three hours. And I'm going to need my phone in that time. So I'm thinking instead of pausing and trying to continue the video. And I, I don't have the capability currently because my house is a wreck. And I can't access my computer. I can't try to like splice two, sh uh, two videos together right now. I have to wait. So this is going to be one video. And then later today, I'll put out a reaction video. And I can't even link because I don't know how to do that. So if you want to know what the reaction of my friend, my family is to my weird concoction and if the um, foam broth worked, Yes, I use bone broth because it's full of collagen and it helps tone up all the loose fat I've got from losing so much weight. Um, but anyway, if you want to know the reaction to all of that, well, you'll just have to search out my next video, I guess. 
Okay, and there you go. So now that that's all set, on a normal machine, you would turn it on and every half an hour to an hour, stir it. Not that big a deal. For my machine, because it's this big roaster, I put a little water in the bottom and that helps it get a nice even cook. And I put a little water in the bottom of this and then I put that on top of it and then it cooks for three hours. And like I said, every half an hour to every hour, I give it a good stir. So I gotta set this puppy up over here to the only outlet that's available and won't make everything in the kitchen turn off. Make sure nothing meltable is under it or near it. That's a very, very important thing to do. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and take one little. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good stuff. I can't wait till it's crispy again. Have a good one. Ooh, the spice is coming in. Heh, but good.